This is far more than just a single pattern like people are selling online. It is customizable, it's open source. But if I were to utilize the quarter clamp, so I push all this way and this way, and then I tighten my cam clamp, suddenly now if I pull back, I have a great deal of holding power. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. I've crossed the thousand subscriber mark. This is a gift that I have created a program in OpenSCAD that's an open source that you can adjust and make custom cams very, very quickly. It's easy to use. The entire code is below the description of the video that you're watching. Just copy and paste it into the OpenSCAD editor window. When you get in there, go ahead and hit the F5 or press this button. When you do, something should appear. If you scroll out with the middle mouse wheel, you're going to see a cam that immediately is available to you. If you just want to go ahead and use that right away, then go ahead and click the F6. That will render it into an SVG. Go over to the file, go to export and export as SVG. You can then print that on a piece of printer paper and tape it onto wood, cut it out with scroll saw, band saw, router, etc. Or you can take the SVG, put it into your CNC software and cut out your cam clamps ready to go. But this is far more than just a single pattern like people are selling online. It is customizable, it's open source. And make sure in the window that you have the customizer open because that's the power of this. I have all kinds of parameters pre-designed for that particular cam, but if you click on the parameters, you're gonna find that I have made it so that you can customize just about everything in here with easy sliders. And when, then when you get done, you can just hit the uh, F6, re-render it, and save it as a different SVG. Let's start with a, a few of these. I'm not gonna go through every single nuance of this because it's easier for you to just play around with, but the heart of this program this, I clicked on the F5, by the way, just so it's easier to see, is the fact that my cam designs now are based upon this idea of growing ever a little bit further out as you rotate around 360 degrees. And that's what I call this max grow factor. So if I wanted to change the size at which this goes around, I can change this and shift it inward. I can shift it outward and make it different sizes. Now, if I go way in, you could see that it might get slightly out of whack with our handle. Our handle's got different parameters. So you can adjust the length inward and outward and the width inward and outward. But let's just shift this out for the moment. So it's something like that. If you want the growth to start a little bit further, you could shift this up and it will keep the growth the same, but it will have an inner circle from which it begins uh, to be slightly different. So that's what that is. If you were to um, look at my la last video, if I shut this max grow completely off, essentially what you have is just a circle with a pivot point. You do have the capability of shifting that pivot point wherever you want. Only if you are doing a straight circular design would I recommend that. In fact, I don't think this is at all the way to go. I think a far better way to go is what I had. I mean, I'm gonna reset the parameters to the original. A far better way is to go do this way. It's a better cam. Now, what else can we do uh, with this? I'm rotating here to reorient this a little bit. Another thing besides adjusting the width of the handle, you can also adjust how it rotates. So when you're designing your cam, maybe you need a weird angle because you don't want it to hit the fence. So you can do that. You can also uh, shorten up your handle like that. It is possible that your handle will get detached from this. If that happens, then you can change your handle X and Y so you can shift where it overlaps. So I'm gonna deliberately move it away from my object. So I could do like way out here if I wanted to, but you do need it attached when you get all done or it's not gonna be of any use to you. And I can also shift the Y position relative uh, however I want, but essentially you can move it exactly uh, the way you want. And once again, we can change the rotation Maybe you want something like that. 
The bolt hole right now is 6.4 millimeters, which is for a quarter inch bolt. It's just slightly oversized for a quarter inch so it slips down and then I could put a threaded insert underneath but a lot of people want to use these cam clamps with PVC pipes that they glue into their cam or maybe bench dogs if that is you then this program allows for that you can just shift out or you can type in whatever the diameter of your PVC pipe is let's say it was 20 mils hit it and there you go if uh, in the event let's say this was a you know overlapping the side let me scoot this down a little bit that's probably not going to be good because there's not enough you know hold we'll even make it more extreme obviously that's probably not what you want let me shift it out here that probably is not the best clamps kind of cool looking clamp but not not going to be strong at all uh, you could you could raise this up and change the general circle you could exchange change this or if you actually had to you could also shift your pivot point once again i wouldn't recommend doing the xy pivot point offset unless absolutely necessary because it's going to throw off the math that makes this a better clamp and other than that play around with all the parameters when you find something that you think is going to serve you well then once again uh, you can go over here, hit the F6. You now have a brand new SVG model and just go over to file and export and export as SVG. Uh, you can also save the program uh, again, which is, is separate than the export. The export is just literally the model, whereas when you save the program, uh, save as, for example, would save everything that you've got here. And you have the capability of also saving your presets into a new configuration from what I have in the main program over here. Hope that's helpful and how you use these cam clamps is probably as important as actually how you machine them. I didn't quite fully appreciate this until I actually started using them and it makes a world of difference especially if you're using a corner clamping system. So I'm going to go ahead and shift over and show you on a board exactly how you want to utilize your cam clamps. I want to demonstrate how to use one of these cam clamps. I just have a separate little board. It's easier to film than on my actual CNC, but this is to simulate the corner brace that's on a CNC. And let's say I wanted to machine this board. If I were to put this on, I've got my cam clamp with a quarter inch bolt into a thread and insert below. If I were to put this board on like so, and push it would definitely pinch it a little bit and I would have definitely some protection pulling this way but if I push it all the other way it's going to come loose immediately so that's not a good scenario but if I were to utilize the quarter clamp so I push all this way and this way and then I tighten my cam clamp suddenly now if I pull back I have a great deal of holding power this way I also have very good holding power this direction because it's going to hit this fence, so it's not going to want to go that way. And this way, it's prevented to go from that side of the fence that's along this way. So that is actually a pretty solid mount, and you could certainly put another cam clamp out in here. The downside is it doesn't have a great deal of protection if this wants to go straight up so if you were to go too aggressive with one of your bits it definitely could come loose pull upward if you had an upcut bit you could eliminate that by putting down a little hold down over here you could even put a threaded insert directly in your cam clamp that has a swing arm because this is bolted down that would give you some hold down as well you need to evaluate whether the cam clamp that you're using is sufficient for your milling, but I think you're gonna find that for many, many jobs, it's gonna serve you well. Always think safety first and use everything that I provided at your own risk. I'm at VCarve. I just wanna show you very quickly how to import one of these SVGs. Put in your board dimensions and thickness that you're going to machine on, click OK. All you have to do to get that vector is go over to the file import import vector find wherever it is in your particular software click ok and you don't see it in the middle of your board because it tends to load in below it 
that's not really that much of a problem. If you just hit the G on your keyboard, it will group all those vectors and then you can use your arrow keys to shift it wherever you want on your board. And then you're ready to create some paths. But before we do, I would recommend that you click on this one more time, hit U to ungroup, then click on the fillet tool and you can put little fillets on any corners that you want to soften up. And the next thing I would do is I would clean up my nodes. It will machine just fine, but if you use this fit to curve and we come over here and we click on this, you can see that I created a ton of little points as I created this SVG model and it would be nice if it would be able to clean that up. And so we're gonna go ahead and do that. I've got it so we'll replace the original vector and I'm gonna click preview and look at how it cleaned up all those nodes and made it much easier to machine. It'll make it faster as well. Click OK. Then we have to go get the other one, fit to curve. And when I zoom in, you can see that it had many, many nodes. I could leave it like that. It would machine just fine. But I'm going to go ahead and preview and click OK. And I'm going to zoom back out. And now that is a much nicer thing. You can go over to tool paths and then create a profile and maybe a pocket. If you do a pocket of something close to your bit size, make sure it's an upcut bit or better yet, use a smaller bit, just pocket out with a smaller bit. That way you don't overheat your bit and potentially cause a fire. Hope you enjoyed this open source cam clamp software that I provided for you. Just make sure that you do your own diligence with safety, use at your own risk, and always verify that the particular hold is sufficient for whatever use that you're going to employ it for. So that is on you. Uh, with that being said, if you enjoyed what I provided, if you could hit like, maybe leave a comment. If you have some parameters that you found work particularly well for your particular clamps, then post them below so that other people can glean from that. I'm going to be switching out from the CNC build series. Uh, I've got some really, really neat stuff that I've been itching to do. So uh, you definitely want to tune in for the next videos because I think you're going to have to try some of this stuff out.